welcome guys to a fair share we have a new show where uh, what, what do we do we, we play games on game pass you know one person picks a game a month we play through it and then we we sit here and have a little chitty chat chat about it you bet uh, so the first game we're doing is shadows of the damned from suda 51 published by ea i think yes yep, yep. and uh the creators of that is uh suda which you know they're known for uh no more Than heroes uh lollipop chainsaw a bunch of weird games we also got the director of we got shinji mikami who directed resident evil so you can kind of see some of the influence of that in there and then director massimo guirani who i don't know who that is but he's prominently featured in the credits so well, there's also know. yakira you know yamamoko who is uh the composer on the silent hill games i, was... I didn't know that that makes sense now thinking back on the music with some of the like mm. yeah! <laughs> yeah, no. I that happens in some of those songs. I was definitely interested uh, in what the music would be like because of him. Well, what all y'all think of the gameplay loop? I found it had some good good moments overall. Like the how they led up to the bosses and everything was good. Like the progression through gameplay was was pretty decent. Like slowly building you up. It was a classic old style a game like that where it starts really easy and then starts to build up a little bit harder, harder as you go. You know, very similar like over the shoulder kind of uh, shooter like that would be Resident Evil 4 where it has just the reticle as your indicator. Yeah. And I did find that this game was not great with that reticle. Like you could, it was clearly like the laser was piercing through something, but it wasn't, it wouldn't hit them. I, so, I did find that the hitboxes were sometimes wonky. Like there was those guys with the, the cylinders on their shoulders and the guys with the scissor hands. Yeah. And that was, until you had the upgrade for the, um, the I guess, submachine gun or whatever, the where dentist. it would lock dentist, on, yeah. yeah, where it would lock on to the actual parts that it needed to lock on to, those guys were not a fun time. But they just were just annoying to hit those boxes. I just used the hot boner. <clears throat> the hot boner. Yeah. <laughs> hot boner. Yeah, I used the hot boner and it worked quite well. <laughs> oh, I bet it did. <laughs> Showing, Peter. Showing. <laughs> I do like how they did the weapons in the game where like you just really have three that you kind of upgrade as the game goes and they all work in a different way. I, I did actually really like the weapons. The simplicity. It was just, yeah, yeah, the aiming was wonky sometimes. Like overall, the gameplay was pretty well, like the progression, some different enemies being introduced, it was good but then they ran out and like towards the end they're just like have six of these guys and four yeah. of those guys and i i, I don't like yeah. how that's a difficulty once you figure out the enemies it's a pretty easy game like the rolling guys they make them so menacing but you literally just have to sidestep them they hit you charge up the boner to two and then it just destroys them instantly right or, or sorry you charge the uh, skull bu buster to two and it's just bam done yeah yeah, I didn't. I I never found the game challenging. Like there was a couple like moments where I didn't didn't know the mechanic I was supposed to be doing, or like the Paula scene where you're, like you'd run into her by accident. But other than that, I didn't really find the game too hard. Uh, for combat, uh, one of my one of my biggest complaints is I felt like you were too the camera was placed too closely to Garcia, like it was too zoomed in on him, and I feel like pulling the camera back and giving us a little bit of a wider view would have helped for both aiming and just general ge yeah, general yeah. game. I, I do think they try, they almost did that on purpose <clears throat> because of that one feature to hit behind you. If they did the way that you're talking, I would have almost removed the quick switch because it would have made it, those combinations together could have possibly made the game almost even easier because you would have had a wider vision, yeah. but you also would have had, whereas that makes you have to kind of pay more attention. And I think that's that style of game, right? It's that older horror-esque shooter zombie action game, but um, no, I agree with you. I, I would have liked it to be zoomed out a little bit more. But yeah, overall, yeah, he... I found it wasn't hard. It was just you had to figure it out. It was almost like puzzle-esque. Yeah. Which the game actually did, I did a like... pretty decent job in their puzzles. Uh, so I did like some of the other, like, Skull Blaster um, mini games that they had, like the bowling mm. and the pachinko. Yeah, that was cool. While it was like really the... small, it, w it was fun. I, I enjoyed it. It was a nice little, like, relief. While you were playing yeah, a little game, break right? from the normal, 
gameplay. Uh, w one complaint about the game I missed going over is the wooden boxes that you couldn't break them by swinging at them. That yes, really, yes. That really I, upset I wanted me. to bring that up too. That pissed me off. Yeah, Fuck yeah. that. Yeah, that's so I, dumb. There was one. I was so determined on one of them. I sat there for probably like five minutes trying to find an angle that I could whack it because I thought, oh, maybe it's just because it's too low or something. So I gotta like somehow move it up so I can hit it at my waist level because apparently Garcia can't bend his fucking waist at all. He has to stand straight up. So or like for about half was... the game, I assumed you just couldn't break those boxes. It wasn't until I accidentally I... shot one. I was like, oh, it, it broke. What did you guys think of the dark I liked darkness the mechanic? Darkness mechanic. Yeah, I was. <laughs> I, I liked it. It was um. Initially, I was like, oh, this is going to get old, but I kind of like that it made you have to like react differently and prioritize different stuff. And then there's the one creature where like the darkness is beneficial for getting him killed. Yeah. So I, I liked say... how you kind of had to do that. Yeah, yeah, overall, I think the darkness was good. It was cool. I just liked how diverse they made it. Like to me at the beginning, I was like, oh, is this all it's going to be is like you kind of run in, you have to, you know, hit the goat or you have to or use the firework or something. Is that all it's going to be? But um, then they incorporated, yeah, the monster who it's you you want them to it, to turn to darkness and then it'd be easier. Or I, did, I found that health wise, like on the hardest difficulty, I never had a trouble keeping health supplies like yeah, I had no. so many health supplies that the only reason I was dying was a because some bullshit happened that was like, like the 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 glitch with my Paula run where it would put me in different directions and it would not be consistent whatsoever, or it'd be like, yeah, you'd accidentally dive into her or something like that. Yeah, I think there's only a couple times where I had to buy, uh, like tequila packs or absinthe packs from Christopher or like the Christopher vending machines. Fucking Christopher. It's I like Happy Trails! I love Christopher. Christopher it's, is one of the best characters in the game. I mean, that's our next topic, isn't it? His characters anyways? Yeah. Well, uh, there's one last uh, gameplay part. One thing that sucked was the side-scrolling sequences. Oh my god! Yeah, they, so bad! Like, <laughs> they were... If they were shorter, it would have been like, okay, fine. But it was just, they were so long and boring that it was like... I hated I that boss that was, fight. I See, hated it so much. This is where Great and I, it's very interesting because I found that boss fight so fucking easy. Like, I literally, I, I it did easy. it once. The just I didn't, I didn't die a single time yeah. against that, yeah, that it, boss. Yeah, I didn't die once. I kept, uh, like I was telling Jared, I kept getting shit RNG because there's one point where she grabs you and there's nothing you can do about it and she like jerks you around a bunch. Yeah. And I would get hit by the little green droplets like seven times while she was doing that. Oh, and you were I just getting bad luck. Yeah, yeah. Th I, I didn't even... Get and that, that's the other thing in that stage, like, oh, I've collected all these health items. Glad I can't use them. Yeah, it's just like heal immediately now. Go ahead. I, I was just I, I was just going to say, I, I did find also with that is like the damage you take in that side scrolling thing. Not from her. Her aside is fine. But like they would come and you couldn't shoot. The thing that pissed me off is if you got, say you were going on the screen, you were in the wrong place at the wrong time and they dropped like three of them right down onto you, you were dead. There's nothing you could do about that situation. You couldn't shoot them, you couldn't escape, you were dead. It was just like, fuck you, no chance. I felt like a lot of the game felt like a fever dream with all like the lewd elements and nonsensical nature of the plot. I mean, they they totally went for that whole, um, they dove into the comedy aspect, like the, the sexual innuendo if, as you were going through there, on everything. If there was an opportunity for a dick joke, a dick joke was made. <laughs> I like well, how they opened it up. Your companion's name is Johnson. I like, I love how they open it up with the fucking, uh, the guy sitting there with this big cylinder and he's like, if your thing was basically as big as my thing, you wouldn't have to deal with it. So you will know so if funny. this type of game, if like this comedy and this type of game is for you instantly so, within the what, opening scene. That's what think, I was about to ask. Did game... it hit it for you guys? Did it do it? I wrote I... down here. The, the first line in the game is time to ride the bullet train. Hell monkey. And I knew <laughs> it, as soon as that line was issued, it was like, oh, it's going to be this kind of game. For me, I, I found it had too, almost too much repetition. It was a short game. And the amount of times they'd say the same lines, like not for the cutscenes, the cutscenes would have different lines, except for when he was referring to himself, he'd always say the same fucking thing. But it would have different lines, but any of the gameplay or like anytime you get something, all right, G, plug her in. 
<laughs> it's like, I get it. When the goddamn I... blue crystal inside your skull. <laughs> After about the third uh, boss fight, I wrote this down. I, it just like word for word, right? I wrote down. Garcia Hotspur, the main character, is a complete arrogant douche. He's the same fucking lame ass speech every time you fight a boss. Before you die, I'll carve my name into your flesh. And that name is Garcia Hotspur. He's like, Garcia Fuck fucking you. Hotspur. Because his actual it. middle name is fucking. I hate it. Uh, I hate it. Shut up. I kind of like that. It seems like it's kind of his, like, his Zorro shtick, you know? Like, same as carving a, a Z into it's him being like, I'm Garcia fucking Hotspur. Blah, blah, blah. It's like his. It's his demon hunting thing that he always does. So I did a little research into the game's development, and I found out that the final copy of the game was significantly different than what they intended going into it. EA really, really fought them on the concept. Like, uh, originally, you weren't even going after Paula. Originally, Paula was designed to be like a little girl living in your gun. And it would be a, and there a love story would be based. She was your Johnson essentially. Johnson was only added in after EA didn't like that, and this, the the story was heavily changed. Like the creators ended up being disappointed in the final end product. Direct quote. So I think that's you, interesting that's for for the story. I think that's why there's a, there is maybe a lot of repetition and somewhat that, like that. I think that had a lot to do with it. Was the uh, adult rating still a thing when this game came out? Was that still I, I, yeah, I would have been. Yeah, I, I mean, the game has titties in it, so it's no, an I know, EA but I, game. I, just... I was very surprised it's an EA game with, and there's there's a lot of dark stuff in this game. Well, there's also like just pure sexual, like it's sex, like the one scene where you're running in the dark and you have Paula, big Paula, fucking basically strip dancing for like, you in the sky. I was well, like, you run on her boots. <laughs> yeah. yeah. He was like, yeah, continue. Let's go. You you stayed on her stomach a little longer than others. Did uh, when when I bridge. was playing through that level, <laughs> I made I made a note saying my 13 year old self would have loved this game. <laughs> yeah, I think I made a note like that, too. It's like the game is titties. That's a plus. I, like I also like models. how they established the lore of the bosses. Yes. With, like, yeah, the little the books. Big, yeah, I was just going to yeah. say that. That yeah. was one the, that was probably one of my favorite parts of the game those books mm -hmm. yeah mine as well but apparently um the unbreakable huntress that they talk about in one of them it's supposedly hinted to be paula so apparently paula you know it's referenced it... that she you know is married sort of to a uh, fleming in a way that's what i thought because the end of the game, you find out that Paula is uh, Fleming's wife, and that it's all gonna happen all over again. And I really didn't like the ending. I I kind of liked it. It was it was different. It wasn't what I expected. Yeah, I don't know. Like, it it did seem I, I didn't because the whole time they make it seem like she's the um like she's purely his girlfriend essentially, and and you know she has nothing to do with the underworld. And all of a sudden, they're talking about how she's basically the mistress of the lord of demons uh, but, I, was, um, I was disappointed that Flem fleming felt like he got zero development or time at all yeah he was in the beginning and then he was in the last act and then he died yep and that was pretty much it yeah it seemed more about killing his lieutenants than killing him mm -hmm. like i felt like they were characterized better than he was yeah, I, I, I did. I agree with that. Like, even in his level, Act 5, like, you didn't really have any development for him. Whereas every other character, like you said, you got to know them throughout their level. Like, everything you did in the level kind of hinted towards, like, things about that uh, demon lieutenant that you were facing. I did really enjoy that part. I actually really enjoyed the environments. I thought yeah. they were pretty well yeah. done. And the detail was... That's something to appreciate. Like going through the forest, I noticed the, all the marionette dolls that were moving. Those were creepy. Mm -hmm. I, I really like that. It's like the small detail in that. I really like I think I got a I few think... game clips of them. There was a couple of my favorite levels. Where one was the Rubik's Cube one or like the cube maze kind of idea with the moving stairs. I really enjoyed that like level design, how they, they incorporated the puzzle into a bigger puzzle. And they also incorporated, you know, enemies into it and how they utilized the terrain and then i really liked although act four for me was not a really enjoyable act i enjoyed the i think it's the second last level where you're where it's got the, the library four different, or whatever no it was the one it was the one in the town where you're still walking around the town and you, she goes into the church i i found that level was like i really enjoyed that level i just the whole 
environment looked really neat and they, they incorporated like you're inside the detail was something to appreciate especially for a game of that age like it i think it's it, environmentally it uh, it pointed to more detail than a lot of games do even nowadays well remember this game came out uh three no f about five months prior to skyrim oh shit so that's that's kind of interesting. That is interesting because I would not have equated them with the same time period. It <laughs> feels like a completely different game. Yeah, also, yeah, shout yeah. out to the baby faces. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So I had the mistake of pausing my game near one, and uh, the babies don't stop making noises. <laughs> nope. <laughs> Whether you give them what they want or not, they they will not stop making baby noises. Have you? Oh. Did you guys ever look at them after you fed them the whatever? Yeah. Yeah, they just like a weirdly <laughs> creepy, happy baby face. It was it was Shows really weird. How weird. It looked it like is. they, it was just messed up. I I didn't have I didn't pause my game near one, Peter, but I I decided to take a stand against a bunch of enemies near one, and I literally ah. wanted to close my ears because all I heard while I was killing these <laughs> demons was this fucking baby noises, and I was like, please, please stop. <laughs> That's a, another, in terms of sound, I don't know if we're moving on yet, but there was like no directional anything with the game. Like if there was a demon, he was like a surround sound. He was somewhere, but you couldn't tell, you couldn't hear. Maybe I've been playing too much, too much Dead by Daylight or something, but I just like, it was annoying for me. I, I, I noticed it a decent amount. I played mostly, I wasn't using my headset for these ones. I was just using my TV for this game. So for me, it was it wouldn't have mattered whether they had directional anyways on it. Um, I did use it a few times when like w when we'd be getting ready to do some gaming with us. I'd have my headphones on and I'd be listening to it. And I know exactly what you're saying. Like there's just no, there is no real indicator of like, are they on my right or are they on my left kind of thing. Mm -hmm. It's It was simply just, you know, the demon's here, go for it. I did... I did, however, I, like the music was just, it, it was fun. I found it was, it was a fun music to play to. I really like it. Really I, I, I love the music. Boss yeah. battle music is awesome. And then some of the opening music where you, it's uh, Garcia's just driven down like the highway to hell pretty much. And it's, I think it's during that scene. It's some badass metal. It got me so hyped for the game. It does a good job at doing that. Well, it makes you feel like a badass demon hunter. That's literally what the music makes you feel like. And there's some good songs that like make you feel stressed the fuck out just because of how like eerie and uncomfortable it makes you feel with like someone just screaming in your ear. That's part of the music. Well, like those the 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 light up slug sections. I feel like those those sections were made by their <laughs> music. Yeah. <laughs> like yeah, I really I really like the slug music. Yeah, yeah. The worst. I that, love that, those that, parts. Fucking, uh, the, the one where there was like, it was funny because there was one, like the, the enemies, the nice thing about that game is if you were running past a regular enemy, for the most part, you could run through all of them. Even if you got cornered, you know, dive a little bit, get out of it. And you couldn't get hit once, no matter where you were. Um, I found it like that slug level, most of the slug levels, that was the most beneficial thing about the game is like they allowed you to do that. Cause if they didn't, that, those levels could have been a lot harder than they uh, than they turned out to be, I'd find. Few like, those could have been, those could have been game changing levels for like, you know, cha changing the game from an eight hour game into like a 15 to 20 hour game. No, the music was awesome. I enjoyed it thoroughly the whole time. I felt like some of the sound effects, like when you'd pick up like the strawberries and whatnot, they really reminded me of Resident Evil sounds. Yeah. Or opening doors, that was yeah. another one. Or when you, when you, when you, uh, uh, finished an area and then the door became available to you kind of thing that also kind of very reminiscent of resident evil i like the gun yeah. sound effects too like the actual sounds of the guns it felt good all of the hit yeah. sound effects were pretty solid too are we doing a final like review thing here i was just kind of thinking like in general like would we recommend it to someone okay like i enjoyed the comedy i enjoyed the small details and the art the gameplay was eh story was eh i don't know if i ever would have played this game and i i don't think i'll ever play it again if someone was looking to play an action game like this i think i'd rather i'd sooner point them towards one of the resident evil games or something the, the 
it did some things well for sure the the atmosphere of the game was dark and i haven't seen a game that dark in quite a while i just don't think those types of games fly nowadays so it was nice seeing that but other than that there was too much stuff that was just okay for me to ultimately recommend it to someone i'm i'm kind of on the same page i i liked the atmosphere it was it was comical but i found it was too repetitive with its comedy like the same jokes over and over and over um so i found it that it, it kind of ran out a little bit of the humor then um the gameplay was meh the story was funny um but i mean again they didn't have enough development for like the end game for me to be like oh it was a great story because the main purpose of you going in there wasn't really developed you didn't know anything about paula except that she was garcia's uh, girlfriend until way down the road in the end i probably would never have played this but i would also recommend them either if they're going for an action shooter I'd be, again, Resident Evil or even like a Doom kind of game I would recommend them for. With the game being on Game Pass, if you're someone who likes Resident Evil, I would definitely recommend the game. I, I wouldn't say there's anything that the game does bad. Some of the humor has definitely not aged as well. Some of the gameplay is just kind of okay, but I wouldn't say any of it is not fun. It's really just kind of an experience that focuses on like making you have fun the whole time and not trying to be a deeper experience than that. It's just like dark comedy, go. And I appreciate it for that. I think that's why I'd recommend it. It's like a really short experience. Mm -hmm. And with it being on Game Pass, like you could beat it in a short amount of time and it might end up be like, I think this is regarded as a cult classic. Just the type of gameplay and the comedy would really appeal to some people, I think. Yeah, it's a good yeah, point that. that it doesn't overstay its welcome, that it is short, it knows what it is, it does that, and then it's done. Like, if you are familiar with Suda51 and the games they've made, and you like those, you'll like this. But if All you right. have any suggestions for what we should play on Game Pass, feel free to let us know. So this was Thanks fun for, for our first episode. I'm happy to have done Shadows of the Damned. It's a game yeah, I always wanted to play, and I'm glad I got you guys to play it too. Again, it was one of those things where it's like the, the point of the one of the big points of the show that we came across was that we wanted to bring out games that we wouldn't necessarily play on a on an average. Like I wouldn't go onto Game Pass and be like, I'm downloading this game to play today. I'm, it's it's kind of nice to do that, right? Because it gets you outside of your kind of usual line zone. of games. Yeah. We hope yeah. you guys enjoyed the new show. It is. It, we are going to be focusing on it quite a bit for the next uh, while. It is our I'm gonna main. Try it. We're going to try. We'll be it developing it show. further. Like Peter said, if you have any suggestions for us, let us know. Come in the Discord, hang out. If you have suggestions, you can let us know there as well. Um, yeah. And maybe you could play through uh, our next game once it's announced and join in on our conversation. Heck yeah. Yeah, we'd love to. We'd love to hear what you guys have to say about it as well. But only if you agree with us. Well, I mean, if we you don't agree, agree other just one, don't so. even bother voicing your opinion because it's dumb. Yeah. That's what I like <laughs> to hear. <laughs> so.